So in this video, we're going to talk about what ingress is and how you should use it. And also what are the different use cases for ingress. So first of all, let's imagine a simple Kubernetes cluster where we have a pod of my application and it's corresponding service, uh, my app service. So the first thing you need for a UI application is to be accessible uh, through browser, right? So for external requests to be able to uh, reach your application. So one way to do that, um, an easy way is through an external service where basically you can access the application using HTTP protocol, the IP address of the node and the port. However, this is good for test cases and if you want to try something very fast, but this is not what the final product should look like. The final product should be like this. So you, you have a domain name for your application and you want a secure connection using HTTPS. So the way to do that is using Kubernetes component called ingress. So you'll have a my app ingress and instead of external service, you would instead have an internal service. So you would not open your application through the IP address and the port. And now if the request comes from the browser, it's going to first reach the ingress and ingress then will redirect it to the internal service and then it will eventually end up with the pod. So now let's actually take a look and see how external service configuration looks like so that you have a practical understanding. So first of all, if you want to know in more details how Kubernetes YAML files are written and what the syntax looks like for different components, then I have a separate video so you can check it out. But here to just to understand the main concepts. So you have the service, which is of type load balancer. This means we are opening it to public by assigning an external IP address to the service. And this is the port number that user can access the application at. So basically, the IP address, the external IP address and the port number that you specify here. Again, if you want to know more details about each attribute, then check out my Kubernetes YAML video. Now with ingress, of course, it looks differently. So let's go uh, through the syntax of ingress. Basically, you have a kind ingress instead of a service. And in the specification where the whole configuration happens, you have so called rules or routing rules. And this basically defines that the main address or all the requests to that host must be forwarded to an internal service. So this is the host that user will enter in the browser and in ingress you just define a mapping. So what happens when that request to that host gets issued, you redirect it internally to a service. The path here basically means the URL path. So everything after the domain name, so slash whatever path comes after that, you can define those rules here. And we'll see some different examples of the path configuration later. And as you see here in this configuration, uh, we have a HTTP protocol. So later in this video, I'm going to show you how to configure HTTPS connection using ingress component. So right now in the specification, we don't have anything configured for the secure connection. It's just HTTP. And one thing to note here is that this HTTP attribute here does not correspond to this one here. This is a protocol that the incoming request gets forwarded to to the internal service. So this is actually the second step and not to confuse it with this one. And now let's see how the internal service to that ingress will look like. So basically backend is the target where the request, the incoming request will be redirected and the service name should correspond to the internal service name like this and the port should be the internal uh, service port. And as you see here, the only difference between the external and internal services is that here in internal service, I don't have the third port, which is the node port starting from 30,000. We now have that attribute here and the type is a default type, not a load balancer, but internal service type, which is cluster IP. So this should be a valid domain address. So you can just write anything here. It has to be first of all valid and you should map that domain name to IP address of the node 
that represents an entry point to your Kubernetes cluster. So for example, if you decide that one of the nodes inside the Kubernetes cluster is going to be the entry point, then you should map this to the AP address of that node. Or, and we will see that uh, later, if you configure a server outside of the Kubernetes cluster that will become the entry point to your Kubernetes cluster, then you should map this host name to the IP address of that server. So now that we saw what Kubernetes ingress components looks like, let's see how to actually configure ingress in the cluster. So remember this diagram I showed you at the beginning. So basically you have a pod service and corresponding ingress. Now, if you create that ingress component alone, that won't be uh, enough for ingress uh, routing rules to work. What you need in addition is an implementation for ingress. And that implementation is called ingress controller. So the step one will be to install an ingress controller, which is basically another pod or another set of pods that run on your node in your Kubernetes cluster and thus evaluation and processing of ingress rules. So the YAML file that I showed you uh, with the ingress component is basically this part right here. And this has to be additionally installed in Kubernetes cluster. So what is ingress controller um, exactly? The function of ingress controller is to evaluate all the rules that you have defined in your cluster and this way to manage all the redirections. So basically this will be the entry point in the cluster for all the requests to that domain or subdomain rules that you've configured. And this will evaluate all the rules because you may have 50 rules or 50 ingress components created in your cluster. It will evaluate all the rules and decide based on that, which forwarding rule applies for that specific request. So in order to install this implementation of ingress in your cluster, you have to decide which one of many different third party implementations um, you want to choose from. I'll put a link of the whole list in the description where you see different kinds of uh, ingress controllers you can choose from. There is one from Kubernetes itself, which is Kubernetes Nginx ingress controller, but there are others as well. So once you install ingress controller in your cluster, you're good to go create ingress roles and the whole configuration is going to work. So now that I've shown you how ingress can be used in a Kubernetes cluster, there is one thing that I think is important to understand in terms of setting up the whole cluster to be able to receive external requests. Now, first of all, you have to consider the environment where your Kubernetes cluster is running. If you're using some cloud service provider, like um, Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, Lino, there are a couple more uh, that have out of the box Kubernetes solutions, um, or they have their own virtualized load balances, etc. Your uh, cluster configuration would look something like this. So you would have a cloud load balancer that is specifically implemented by that cloud provider. And external requests coming from the browser will first hit the load balancer and that load balancer then will redirect the request to ingress controller. Now, this is not the only way to do it, even in cloud environment, you can do it in, in, in a couple of different ways, but this is one of the most common uh, strategies. And advantage of using cloud provider for that is that you don't have to uh, implement a load balancer yourself. So with minimal effort, probably on most cloud providers, you will have the load balancer up and running and ready to receive those requests and forward those requests then to your Kubernetes cluster. So very easy setup. Now, if you're um, deploying your Kubernetes cluster on a bare metal environment, then you would have to do that part yourself. So basically you would have to configure some kind of entry point to your Kubernetes cluster yourself. And there's a whole list of different ways to do that. And I'm going to put that also in the description. But generally speaking, either inside of a cluster or outside as a separate server, uh, you will have to provide an entry point. And one of those types is an external proxy server, uh, which can be a software or hardware solution that will take a role of that load balancer and entry point to your cluster. So basically what this would mean is that you will have a separate server 
and you would give this a public IP address and you would open the ports in order for the requests to be accepted. And this proxy server then will act as an entry point to your cluster. So this will be the only one accessible externally. So none of the servers in your Kubernetes cluster will have publicly accessible IP address, which is obviously a very good security practice. So all the requests will enter the proxy server and that will then redirect the request to ingress controller and ingress controller will then decide which ingress rule applies to that specific request and the whole internal request forwarding will happen. So as I said, there are different ways to configure that and to set it up depending on which environment you are and also which approach you choose. But I think it's a very important concept to understand how the whole cluster setup works. So in my case, since I'm using uh, Minikube to demonstrate all of this on my laptop, the setup will be pretty easy. And even though this might not apply exactly to your cluster setting, still you will see in practice how all these things work. So the first thing is to install Ingress Controller in Minikube. And the way to do that is by executing Minikube add-ons enable Ingress. So what this does is automatically configures or automatically starts the Kubernetes Nginx implementation of Ingress Controller. So that's one of the many third-party implementations, which you can also um, safely use in production environments, not just Minikube, but this is what Minikube actually offers you out of the box. So with one simple command, Ingress Controller will be configured in your cluster. And if you do kubectl get pod in a kube system namespace, you will see the Nginx Ingress Controller pod running in your cluster. So once I have Ingress Controller installed, now I can create an Ingress rule that the controller can evaluate. So let's actually head over to the command line where I'm gonna create Ingress rule for Kubernetes dashboard component. So in my Minikube cluster, I have Kubernetes dashboard, which is right now not accessible externally. So what I'm gonna do is, since I already have internal service for Kubernetes dashboard, and a pod for that, I'm gonna configure an ingress rule for the dashboard. So I can access it from a browser using some domain name. So I'm gonna, so this shows me all the components that I have in Kubernetes dashboard. And since I already have uh, internal service for Kubernetes dashboard and the pod that's running, I can now create an ingress uh, rule in order to access the Kubernetes dashboard using some uh, host name. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna create an ingress for Kubernetes dashboard. Um, so these are just metadata, the name is gonna be dashboard ingress and the namespace is gonna be in the same namespace as the service and pod. So in the specification, we are gonna define the rules. So the first rule is the host name. I'm just gonna call I'm going to define dashboard.com and the HTTP forwarding to internal service path. Let's leave it at all path. And this is the backend of the service. So service name will be what we saw here. So this is the service name and service port is where the service listens. So this is actually 80 right here. And this will be it. That's the ingress configuration for uh, forwarding every request that is directed to dashboard.com to internal Kubernetes dashboard service. And we know it's internal because its type is cluster IP. So no external IP address. So obviously I just made up host name dashboard.com. It's not registered anywhere. And I also didn't configure anywhere which IP address this host name should resolve to. And this is something that you will always have to configure. So first of all, let's actually create that ingress rule. So kubectl apply and it's called dashboard ingress yaml. See ingress was created. So if I do get ingress, in the namespace, 
I should see my ingress here. And as you see, address is now empty because it takes a little bit of time to assign the address um, to ingress. So we'll have to wait for that to get the IP address that uh, will map to this host. So I'm just going to watch this and it's, I see that address was assigned. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to take that address and in my etc hosts file at the end, I'm going to define that mapping. So that IP address will be mapped to dashboard.com. And again, this works locally. If I'm going to type dashboard.com in the browser, this will be the IP address that it's going to be uh, mapped to, uh, which basically means that the request will come into my Minikube cluster, will be handed over to Ingress controller, and Ingress controller then will go and evaluate this rule that I've defined here and forward that request to the service. So this is all the configuration we need. So now I'm going to go and and enter dashboard.com and I will see my Kubernetes dashboard here. So Ingress also has something called a default backend. So if I do kubectl describe ingress, the name of the ingress and the namespace, I'll get this output and here there is an attribute called default backend that maps to default HTTP backend um, port 80. So what this means is that whenever a request comes into the Kubernetes cluster that is not mapped to any backend, so there is no rule for mapping that request uh, to, an, to a service, then this default backend is used to handle that uh, request. So obviously, if you don't have this service, created or defined um, in your cluster, Kubernetes will try to forward it to the service, it won't find it, and you would get some um, default error response. So for example, if I um, entered some path that I haven't configured, I just get page not found. So a good usage for that is to define custom error messages when a page isn't found, when a request comes in that you can't handle or the application can handle so that the user still sees some meaningful error message or just a custom page where you can redirect them to your home page or something like this. So all you have to do is create an internal service with the same name, so default HTTP backend and the port number and also create a pod or application that uh, sends that error, custom error message response. So till now I have shown you what ingress is and how you can use it. I've also shown you a demo of how to create an ingress rule in Minikube, but we've used only a very basic uh, ingress YAML configuration. Just a simple forwarding to one internal service with one path. But you can do much more with ingress configuration than just basic uh, forwarding. And in the next section, we're going to go through more use cases of how you can define uh, more fine granular routing for applications inside a Kubernetes cluster. So the first thing is defining multiple paths of the same host. So consider following use case. Google has one domain, but has many services that it offers. So for example, if you have a Google account, you can use its analytics, you can use it shopping, you, you have a calendar, you have a Gmail, etc. So all of these are separate applications uh, that are accessible with the same domain. So consider you have an application that does something similar. So you offer two separate applications. They're part of the same ecosystem, but you still want to have them on separate URLs. So what you can do is that in rules, you can define the host, which is myapp.com. And in the path section, you can define multiple paths. So if user wants to access your analytics application, then they have to enter myapp.com slash analytics, and that will forward the request to internal and analytics service and the pod. Or if they want to access the shopping application, then 
the URL for that would be myapp.com slash shopping. So this way you can do forwarding with one ingress of the same host to multiple applications using multiple paths. Another use case is when instead of using URLs to make different applications accessible, some companies use subdomains. So instead of having myapp.com slash analytics, they create a subdomain analytics.myapp.com. So if you have your application configured that way, your configuration will look like this. So instead of having one host, like in the previous example, and multiple path here inside, now you have multiple hosts where each host represents a subdomain. And inside you just have one path that again, redirects that request to analytic service. Pretty straightforward. So now in the same request setting, you have analytic service and a pod behind it. Now the request will look like this using the subdomain instead of path. And one final topic that I mentioned that we'll cover here is configuring TLS certificate. Till now, we've only seen ingress configuration for HTTP requests, but it's super easy to configure HTTPS forwarding in ingress. So the only thing that you need to do is define attribute called TLS above the rules section with host, which is the same host as right here, and the secret name, which is a reference of a secret that you have to create in a cluster that holds that TLS certificate. So the secret configuration would look like uh, this. So the name is the reference right here and the data or the actual contents contain TLS certificate and TLS key. If you've seen my other videos where I create different components like secret, you probably notice the type additional type attribute here. In Kubernetes, there is a specific type of a secret called TLS. So we'll have to use that type when you create a TLS secret. And there are three small notes to, ma to be made here. One is that the keys of this data have to be named exactly like that. The values are the actual file contents of the certificate or key contents and not the file path or location. So you have to put the whole content here, base64 encoded. And the third one is that you have to create the secret in the same namespace as the ingress component for it to be able to use that. Otherwise you can't reference the secret from another namespace. And these four lines is all you need to configure mapping of an HTTPS request to that host to internal service. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to like it. If you want to be notified whenever a new video comes out, then subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any questions, if something wasn't clear in the video, please post them in the comment section below and I will try to answer them. So thank you and see you in the next video.